So the Attorney General apologizes for not being able to be here today. She is in Davos, or she may be, but she's probably flying somewhere over the Atlantic right now on her way back. And she was there to speak at the World Economic Forum about cybercrime and cyber issues, so it's too bad that she wasn't able to come back. And you get me instead because I happen to live a few blocks from here, so uh, it's an easy walk. So thank you, Tim, again for your warm welcome and for um, to the, I also want to thank the Internet Education Foundation for your leadership in these very important areas. Um, you bring together dedicated professionals, uh, government officials, experts to really explore how we can continue to harness technologies to build more empowered communities and a stronger country. As the Assistant Attorney General of the Criminal Division, my primary responsibility in the cyber area is the vigorous, fair, and effective enforcement of our criminal laws against cybercrime. The Justice Department does that by finding ways to protect our networks against evolving threats, by thwarting bad actors online, and by ensuring that both our security and our liberty remain as strong in the digital age as they have been throughout our history. Essentially, we're focused on the question that the President raised in his State of the Union address a couple weeks ago. How can we, in law enforcement and the Department of Justice, make technology work for us and not against us? This question is relevant really to almost every aspect of our lives, all of you and law enforcement and folks in the Department who deal with national security issues. There's no doubt that technology has greatly expanded and complicated our capacity to detect investigate and prosecute crimes. Today, by using new technology, we can process and analyze evidence with really unprecedented speed and accuracy uh, and precision. We're able to coordinate with partners all over the world in real time, which is a real boon to law enforcement. But just as law enforcement has become better equipped to deal, um, to deal with cyber activities, so have the criminals we've been, we've been working to disrupt. Digital technology has transformed how police and law enforcement and prosecutors do our jobs. Um, but unfortunately, it's also transformed the ability of criminals to engage in criminal activity through the internet and using electronic media. Our bank accounts, our personal information are now fair game and all too readily accessible and tempting to thieves and fraudsters, and not just in the United States, but all over the world. The greater anonymity of cyberspace, the perceived anonymity of cyberspace, gives unprecedented cover to drug dealers, arms traffickers, and others who use dark websites to circulate uh, their wares, including things like illicit conduct, content of, of images of children being exploited, which unfortunately is a huge problem all over the world, and stolen personal identifying information, including credit cards being sold online en masse, again, all over the world. Today, communication is mostly by email and instant message and other electronic media. So there really aren't any more paper trails for us to follow. There are only virtual ones. The data is stored in digital devices, it's stored on hard drives, and increasingly, it's stored in the cloud. It isn't just criminals who exploit the internet for nefarious purposes. The web also hosts a lot of individuals who seek to do harm to our national security, from state-sponsored hackers conducting economic espionage, which unfortunately we see thousands of times every day. Uh, some companies are, are attacked thousands of times in a single day on a regular basis. We see rogue militants and official cyber, cyber warfare units targeting our infrastructure. We see terrorist groups. Uh, we see people plotting attacks. We see people spreading hateful ideologies. These emerging threats require us to be nimble, innovative, and adaptive. And at the, Department of Justice, at the Department of Justice, we are committed to staying ahead of the bad guys. The FBI continues to investigate cyber intrusions and national security threats while monitoring groups and state actors who attempt to steal important data, sensitive data, or inflict harm in other ways. We recognize as prosecutors that prosecution is not the answer to cybercrime. It's one answer, but we, we recognize that prevention is very important. And last year, to that end, we started a cybersecurity unit in our uh, computer crime and intellectual property section in the criminal division 
specifically to address prevention. And that unit works very closely with their exper experienced prosecutors in that unit who are really fluent in the law, in policy, and in the technology of cybercrime and cybercrime prevention. The cybersecurity security unit works very closely with data security experts from the private sector, as well as other companies, to prevent cyber attacks and to prevent data breaches. They work to educate businesses, small and large, on best practices in cybersecurity and how to protect data and avoid breaches. <clears throat> There's a tremendous hunger for knowledge about cybersecurity, and, and we've had several forums that we've organized with the unit, and they've all sold out, uh, well, not sold out because they're free, but they've all been standing room only, and we've had to turn people away. So it's really, really important, and we recognize that we have something to contribute, not only on the prosecution side, but on the prevention side. Of course, our work in the cybercrime area is enhanced by our work with very expert law enforcement agents. I've mentioned the FBI already, but we also work with Secret Service, Homeland Security, the Postal Inspection Service, and even ATF, which has a new means of tracking illegal gun sales over the internet. These are all very important steps to protect our, inf our online information and to co combat crime here in the United States. But as I said earlier, and as you all know, the internet is not a United States issue. Cybercrime is not a United States, United States issue. It's a world issue. So as a result, we have to reach beyond our borders to partner with other countries. And we've done exactly that. We've partnered not just with the countries you might expect, um, but also with a lot of other countries in other parts of the world, other parts of the world besides Europe, uh, where we have strong partnerships. We've embedded, the FBI last year embedded three permanent, permanent cyber assistant legal attaches in the UK. Canada and Australia to help facilitate information sharing and improve cooperation on investigations, real-time cooperation on investigations, and to build stronger relationships. Uh, the Criminal Division has recently placed uh, cyber, cyber prosecutors with Eurojust in The Hague and also in Southeast Asia. Again, these positions will help to improve cooperation, real-time cooperation on law enforcement investigations and strengthen relationships among law enforcement all over the world. We've also created a cyber unit in, our, in the Criminal Division's Office of International Affairs. The Office of International Affairs is, is responsible for responding to requests for, for um, <coughs> excuse me, electronic evidence from foreign authorities. Those requests have increased by 1,000% in the last decade. And we're working hard to keep pace with that increase by hiring more people for the Office of International Affairs, including people with cybercrime expertise. We're also providing critical real-time assistance to many foreign counterparts through the 24-7 points of conduct network that was established by the Budapest Cybercrime Convention. That's a convention that continues to be joined by countries all over the world who are committed to fighting cybercrime. Partnerships like these don't just improve connections with other countries. They also get results. In 2012, we participated in a multinational sweep of child pornography websites. We ultimately dismantled more than 200 websites that sexually exploited children all over the world. In November, for, in November 2014, we joined more than 15 countries on the auspices of the European Cybercrime Center, <clears throat> or EC3, to launch Operation Onimus. That operation shuttered a number of so-called dark market websites that were selling drugs, weapons, stolen credit card data, fake passports and other identification document, documents and computer hacking tools. This past July, in a joint effort with EC3, we shut down the Dark Code Hacking Forum. That's an underground site where hackers met to buy and sell and trade malicious software, botnets, intrusion tools, and stolen personal information. That operation involved a coalition of 20 countries led by the Department of Justice and EC3 and led us to be able to charge, arrest, or search 70 dark code members and associates all over the world. And again, we're working with countries really everywhere because countries all over the world recognize that cybercrime is their problem too. Uh, and that we're really kind of all in this together. So we're working with a lot of non-traditional partners including com uh, countries like e from Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, Latin America, really all over the world. Um, we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to work with foreign law enforcement agencies to prevent and prosecute groups that use the internet for crime and for exploitation. Of course, as we seek 
to, to ensure the safety and integrity of our devices, our databases, and our networks, it's also crucial that we work with the people who create those products, with the executives, the entrepreneurs, the engineers, and the companies that make America's technology industry the envy of the world. Our collaboration with the private sector has been instrumental in a range of very important victories, including the takedown in 2014 of the game over Zeus Botnet. That was an operation where technology and data security companies played a key role and were committed to building on those successes and to continuing to work with the private sector. That's why the Attorney General has been meeting regularly with industry leaders from all over the country to foster cooperation and discuss very urgent issues. And in fact, last week when she was at the World Economic Forum, where she may still be in Davos, um, she joined with industry leaders to endorse recommendations for enhancing public-private partnerships. Continue to reach out to representatives of the technology industry, and our door is always open to discussing new ideas, to combating cybercrime, to combating other problems like online extremism, which, as you can imagine, is a very significant problem. One area where cooperation between the government and the private sector is, is critically important is in addressing the growing problem that we and the government have, which is our inability to obtain critical information in electronic form even when we have a court-authorized warrant uh, letting us do that. This is the problem that you hear referred to, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, it's called going dark. While we still rely on physical evidence, as you can imagine in the 21st century, that kind of evidence, handwritten notes, documents, file cabinets full of paperwork, is growing scarcer by the day. Our ability to track and prosecute criminals now really depends on instant messages, email, and other forms of digital information. In fact, really every kind of criminal case, whether it's a narcotics trafficking case, a terrorism case, or a sophisticated fraud case, relies very heavily on electronic evidence. I don't think I've seen a case uh, that's beyond the most basic case in the last seven or eight years that doesn't rely quite heavily on electronic information. But as new ways of using encryption become an increasingly standard feature of personal devices and messaging platforms, it's becoming more and more difficult for us to obtain data, even when we have court orders authorizing us to do so. These materials are increasingly inaccessible to law enforcement. Um, and we increasingly, as a result, unfortunately, find ourselves facing obstacles to our investigations. And these are obstacles that can and do stop our investigations and our prosecutions in their tracks. We recognize that the security of our online information is critically important, uh, but we also recognize so too is the legal process that protects our values and, very importantly, our safety. These are complementary priorities. They are not competing priorities. After all, digital security is a vital tool, but it's not a cure-all, especially when it impedes our ability to protect ourselves against really very real physical threats in the real world. The Department of Justice is completely dedicated um, to obtaining judicial authorization when we seek electronic evidence. We've done that and we continue to do that. But once that authorization has been obtained, we really need to be able to act on it, to act on the court's directive, if we're going to be able to keep our communities, our country, all of you safe. From gang activity, to child abductions, to national security threats, the ability to access electronic information in a timely manner is often essential to successfully conducting lawful investigations and preventing harm to potential victims. As the FBI director recently said in May in Garland, Texas, two terrorists attempted to kill a lot of people. One of those terrorists exchanged 109 messages with an overseas terrorist. We have no idea what he said because it was encrypted. That's a big problem, and it's a problem that we're going to have to figure out a way to deal with. That's why the Justice Department, along with organizations like the International Association of Chiefs of Police, the National District Attorneys Association, and the Major Cities Chiefs Association, feel very strongly that there needs to be a way for law enforcement to retrieve critical information in cases where it's necessary and where it's authorized by a court. We're committed to working with companies, with innovators, with leaders, and problem solvers like you, all of you, to figure out how we can best meet this need because this is really a public need. It's a need that we all have, um, and it's a need that we all need to work to address. 
Of course, our, int our interest in working with you extends well beyond that issue. The internet has so fundamentally changed the way we all live our lives that we recognize that institutions like law enforcement also have to evolve. <clears throat> As we seek to adapt to the new reality that we face, we really value and want to, and want to tap into your creativity, your expertise, your leadership. All of that can help us ensure that the innovations we enjoy will benefit and protect the American people and not those who would harm us. Because believe me, there are a lot of people out there who seek to harm us, who seek to steal our money, steal our information, damage our national security, damage our data, damage our infrastructure. We understand that this is no easy task. We understand that these are difficult, novel challenges. But what makes us confident about our ability to succeed is that throughout our history, this country has always found a way to move forward while retaining the values who make us uniquely who we are. And we're certain that we'll find a way to do that again in the digital age. I want to thank you for your cooperation in that effort and for your commitment to our shared goals. Um, I look forward to all that we can accomplish together in the weeks and months and years ahead. And thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in here. Um, I know it probably hasn't been easy for a lot of you to get here, so I very much appreciate you coming. And again, apologies that the Attorney General herself could not be here. Thank you.